What is up YouTube? Welcome back to Blue Collar Bass and TV. Guys, today we are talking all about fishing crankbaits for smallmouth bass. So if you're looking to get on some big smallies, guys, stay tuned for this video. Okay, so when you're talking fishing crankbaits, a crankbait is an awesome bait that I've used for years. My grandpa used these for years, guys, taught me how to use them uh, to catch smallmouth bass in areas just like this. Very effective. If you're not throwing a square bill crankbait for some smallies, guys, you're missing out on a lot of action. Today, we're gonna be breaking down what type of square bills I throw, the colors, the gear I throw it on, talking about the rod reel and the line. And also, we're gonna be talking about how to fish it and where to fish it. And then hopefully, we can get on some and actually show you guys how they perform. So breaking down the square bill crankbait itself. This right here, I think is a two inch square bill made by Strike King. This is the KVD, Kevin Van Dam version. It has a very nice square bill on it. And what that square bill is gonna do, as it's popping through the water, bumping off those rocks, this square bill is actually gonna be deflecting this bait off of those items, okay? It's gonna be causing a lot of disturbance on the sand. It's gonna be bumping across those rocks just having a, an erratic action to it. And these KVD baits don't have any rattles on the inside. All you hear is those hooks. All right, so these are actually made out of balsa wood and they are pretty light baits and they don't have a lot of sound to them. Unlike some of the other square bills that you're gonna see, that one actually has a rattle on the inside. Okay, so this actually has a different type of bill to it. This is just a cheap square bill I picked up at Academy Sports, one of their H2O brands. And you can tell that bill isn't as pronounced, it isn't as square of a bill. You guys, this will still work, it will still deflect off of the cover. And you can see how that square bill, if it was down in the water like this, as you're retrieving it, it's gonna look like this. Okay, that's gonna protect those hooks from hopefully not getting hooked up on all the other items in the water, okay? Uh, with that being said, fishing crankbaits, you're naturally going to get hung up a lot more than other baits just because of those treble hooks. And I'm not a big fan of fishing anything that has treble hooks, but guys, sometimes you have to make a sacrifice because these things just catch bass like crazy. All right, so that's kind of the basics of a square bill. I'm not going to get too much into the different styles, okay? Uh, the big thing about it, though, is the size. This is probably the biggest I would throw for a smallmouth. This is, I th once again, I think their two inch version of their KVD baits. We're also gonna be throwing this one. This is, I think, the one inch version or the one and a half inch version. And it's a lot smaller profile. Okay, so anything smallmouth, you're gonna be wanting that smaller profile bait. And it's not that they're scared to go bite it, it's that they physically can't swallow a bait that big because their mouth isn't that big. Okay, so if I were fishing largemouth bass, guess what? I'd be throwing a lot bigger crankbait than this just because, hey, bigger bait, the bigger fish you're probably gonna catch, guys. Just that philosophy there will catch you bigger fish. All right, so with that being said, you know, keep it small. We're talking about colors. I like to keep it pretty simple, guys. I throw chartreuse. Smallies love chartreuse. I throw sexy shad color. Okay, that's a pretty natural bait fish color. For the rivers, I can't find a lot of gold ones, but this gold works very well also. Okay, and then if we're getting into spring or fall, when those crayfish are changing colors, I will actually throw an orange or a red color. Okay, and this will actually mimic a crayfish. Okay, and it can mimic a bait fish too. Once again, kind of going back to that philosophy I was talking about in my jig fishing video, it's not necessarily the colors, in my opinion, that the bass pick up on, it's that presentation and how you fish it. Okay, are you able to get a reaction strike out of those bass with that crankbait going through the water or that jig going through the water? That is what is gonna get you bites. Not necessarily, is it chartreuse, is it white, is it red? I don't think that matters as much, guys. So. Keep it simple, you'll catch fish. All right guys, so now we talked about the colors, we talked about the crankbaits themselves, 
and the sizes. We, we said we want to keep a very small profile bait tied on, okay, to target smallmouth. Largemouths could be a lot different, okay? And once again, for this video purpose, we're just doing smallmouth bass, okay? Uh, so now we're going to talk about the gear that you need to be throwing this on. I just have a six foot, six inch, medium power, and it doesn't matter if it's a fast action tip, it doesn't matter if it's a medium, moderate, it doesn't matter, I believe. Guys, you could even throw this on a medium heavy if you wanted to, okay? But for this, these are my smallmouth rods, and we also have 20 pound braid and a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader tied onto this. And since I use this for all applications for smallmouth fishing, I'm not changing anything up. I don't think there is a need to, okay? So braid and fluorocarbon, braid floats, but that fluorocarbon leader is gonna sink and that is gonna get your bait down to the bottom. If I was largemouth fishing, I would use monofilament line on my crankbait, okay? Straight mono. That is gonna make sure that when I do a hook set, that stretch is gonna be there and not rip these treble hooks out of that fish's mouth, okay? But for smallmouth fishing, we got these rods that have a lot of bend to them. Okay, so those rods have a lot of bend, so I'm not worried about ripping the crankbait out of that fish's mouth. There's gonna be plenty of bend there, okay? And that fluorocarbon's gonna allow that bait to get down in those rocks and bump across the bottom the way I need it to. Okay, so the reel, okay, this is a five two to one gear ratio, plenty. Any spinning rod that you get is gonna be plenty, guys. We don't have to get too fancy. That blue collar mentality, hey, fish with what you got, okay? Keeping it budget on that working man's dime. We're gonna get out there and fish with what we got. If you go through a straight mono with this, go for it, guys. Just get out on the water and fish and have a good time. That is the key. Okay, so uh, I would say for these low profile baits though, medium power rod, use a spinning rod, you gotta get the job done. Okay, that is the gear you need to be throwing. All right, guys, before we head out and actually start fishing, one thing, if you're gonna be fishing crankbaits, you need something to get that hook out of that fish's mouth. So this is just a pair of forceps I got off of Amazon. And uh, guys, if you go to the doctor for an operation, hey, ask them if you can have these. A lot of times they'll give them to you. Okay, so uh, this is gonna allow me to get those treble hooks out of that fish's mouth without you know, getting them in my hand. All right, so I have a pair of these on you. Just a word of advice. Now we're gonna show you where you need to be throwing this. Okay, if you watched my video about locating smallmouth, you know we're gonna be fishing around current. Okay, that's where the fish are gonna be. So that's where we need to be throwing this crankbait, guys. We're gonna be looking for areas that have water anywhere from five feet all the way up to one foot deep. Okay, because we want this crankbait to be bumping in those rocks and actually making contact with the bottom. Most square bills run anywhere from three to five feet deep. So that is kind of our target range here. We're gonna be looking for that area. Okay, keep in mind that if you're fishing a crankbait from the bank or wade fishing, you're gonna get hung up quite a bit. That's just the nature of the beast with these treble hooks. One key to that is keeping that bait moving. Okay, if I was largemouth fishing off of a boat, I would be retrieving, I would be popping the rod, I would be pausing that bait, trying to get a reaction strike. Guys, with smallmouth, when they're out actively feeding, they're not caring about all of that. Retrieve that thing in, just straight retrieve, keep it simple, you're gonna get bites. And I'm gonna show you that today. And that's gonna keep that bait moving to where those treble hooks aren't as exposed and getting hung up. So we have our little area here. I'm gonna be throwing up into the current. So that is one key, guys. This right here is trying to mimic a shad or a bait fish. So bait fish swim downstream or across stream. They never really swim upstream. So if you wanna keep it natural, you have to throw this and work it naturally, okay? So I'm throwing that about a 45 degree angle. I want to make contact with the bottom. This thing is bumping across those rocks, making contact. This is another problem you're going to run into, is getting debris and stuff all over your crankbaits. The whole goal is to keep this bait on the bottom 
making contact all the way across. I want this bait to be bump, 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 bump all the way across the bottom. Making a cast up there, I want to keep this moving. So I have my rod tip down. That way I can make sure that it's making contact with the bottom. Then, like I said, you're gonna have to move this pretty quick. Just because that current's bringing it pretty fast too. Oh, thought we had one there. And I'm just making big, long casts up here towards the bank and just fishing it down. Got one, guys. <laughs> oh, that was a crappie. Yeah, he ended up jumping out of the water. There we go. I think that's a decent one. About normal size. So this is where those pliers come in handy. Getting these little things out of the fish's mouth or wherever it's hung at. Because they do get hung up pretty easy. All right, nice little smiley there, guys. He hit that thing pretty hard. Freaking choke the crankbait. Yeah, he's. He's raring to get back in the water. All right, so another retrieve you can do is reel and stop. Reel and stop. So you can vary your retrieves a little bit, give it more of a realistic, I guess, pattern going through the water. Another retrieve you can do is reel pop, reel, pop, reel, pop. But my favorite is just to retrieve it right back. I think it's easiest. I think it keeps it simple, guys. There we go. That's a good one right here. Oh, it's running right at me. Oh, that's a freaking hybrid bass. What in the heck? Dead. Nice little uh, hybrid there, guys. Didn't even know we had these in here. <laughs> I didn't even know we had hybrids or striper, whatever they are, in this river. It's kind of crazy. Because I've never caught one. Now, I've only caught largemouth, smallmouth in here, and gar. But hey, I'll take it. That was a pretty good little fish. Here we go, guys. This is a really good one, I think. Trying to keep him canned. He is coming right at me. Oh my god, he got off. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Dude, he was about a pound and a half, guys. He wasn't nothing too great, but whew. Yeah, he was he swam right at my leg and when he got to my leg he darted back up. And then I pulled him up on the bank and he uh he flopped off the <laughs> Oh my god, he flopped off onto the bank there. He did not want to be caught. 
But hey, I got to show you, that crankbait does catch them, guys. I hope you guys like this video. Hope you guys learned a lot about fishing crankbaits if you haven't fished them before. I know it's one bait that a lot of people fish and then there's a lot of people that don't. So hopefully you learned something from this. If not, you got to see me catch a couple fish. We didn't catch a lot. We had about an hour to shoot this whole video. So uh, we could have got on some more if I, th I think if we had a little bit more time. But uh, yeah, we're trying to get these videos in with a limited amount of time. Guys, hopefully you learned a little bit about using some of these mini crankbaits. Like we said, for smallmouth, you want to keep that bait profile very small, okay? They can't physically eat a very big bait. So keep it small. You'll catch a bunch. You guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, hit me up in that comment box. And guys, spread the word about this channel. We're almost up to 600 subscribers. I really want to get to 1,000 very soon. And I know I can do it with the help from you all. But please spread the word. Like always, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Also, hit the subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit that notification bell. And guys, keep it blue collar.